Welcome, everybody. Here we are today uh, with Julia and Balaz. So excited to see you. It's been a long coming getting this meeting together. And uh, Julia is based in Ireland and she's a galactic astrologer, which I am so excited to learn more about because I really don't understand much about it. And so, Julia, um, as you know, I have, I have a little bit of a cough. So, you were going to introduce yourself and um, share a little bit about you to start. Thank you, Kelly. So nice to be here with you and uh, get to know your community a little more as I uh, subscribe to your channel and uh, love your content, love your energy, your vibe. Uh, so it's such an honor for me to be here. So just uh, briefly about galactic astrology or how I am involved with this type of work. Um, I was um, offering one-on-one -on -one services, quantum uh, healing hypnosis practitioner, QHHD technique developed by Dolores Cannon over seven years. And uh, because I was interested in astrology from very early on, from uh, my mid-teens, I ask every client for their birth details. And after their regression session, after they told me everything about their life, and I kind of observed their subconscious patterns and their family dynamics from what they've described, after their session, I explored their astrology chart. And over the years, as with any discipline, when you see a huge amount of data, you start understanding any topic in greater depth and you recognize different patterns. And with astrology, what you see is, is really quite fascinating. The deeper you go and the more you see, there is just this beautiful uh, constant validation that there is order in chaos, that somehow things are divinely orchestrated. Um, one big thing that I've learned is that even if people don't understand astrology, the map is inside our hearts, our souls. And if we just follow what feels right, if we follow the intuitive guidance, if we follow the signs that sometimes are quite obvious, we are going very much uh, with alignment of planetary bodies and transits. And it, uh, you know, I love those mind blowing moments when I notice certain manifestation in our everyday life experience and then see it translated into astrological transits the archetypes and movement of planets and it's just really so so amazing to see how we are truly connected and moved by these celestial bodies so um to make the long story short at some point i started observing the stars in my clients natal charts too and i've noticed that um, especially with uh, regression hypnosis sessions when clients regress spontaneously to lifetimes that seemed like not on earth they were describing all kinds of different planetary conditions and different types of bodies oftentimes more either ethereal or plasmic or uh, you know like higher density experiences where it was really obvious that uh, this is a completely different star system even and then reflecting on their natal chart and even the transiting planets when they were in alignment for example with Sirius star and the mm -hmm. client then connected to their Syrian family and became very emotional remembering the connections and realizing that they were connected all along like our star families are sending love and wisdom and encouragement all the time it's, it's so just for the time being just for the time being it's important for us to to be under the veil of forgetting so that we can fully focus on this life experience you know for people who start to spontaneously remember their connections to stars and whole range of beautiful compassionate wise beings when they are going through that transit of remembering it is completely distracting them from their current life experience they're really uh, kind of downloading uh, all kinds of energetic codes and oftentimes are wiped out energetically and need to really just kind of breathe through it as I'm sure you might experience <laughs> sometimes so you know oftentimes people fantasize about or, or dream about or wish for and pray for remembering their star connections and their star family but you know if you if you're praying for it in a time period where you're really meant to focus on here and now interacting with your family members something important is going on or you have a big project in your work you can't really pray for the interference from the stars because it takes over your mind when, when it happens and then you integrate it and then you're able to 
be more grounded in that remembrance and knowing and understanding and then you can kind of go back to uh, being on planet earth uh, full, full on so it's like that so it's kind of seems like yeah. it's a, a map that validates for us the moments in our life when that's supposed to come in so that we're not inviting or asking it when it's not the moments because yeah because I yeah I, I love the prayer of I love prayers that are aligned with more surrendering like um you know bring into my life what is in alignment with divine timing with with kind of you know with the destiny that that was um that was planned for me by our own higher selves and our team of uh, wise guides um you know so many people who regress to life between lives they would experience the the planning of their incarnation and everything they were choosing in terms of family uh, DNA lineage, the the traumas, the important moments, the highs and lows, and always in alignment with the astrological orchestration too. So it's quite fascinating to see that too. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, we all have our beautiful, great design, right? The design of each lifetime in the plan and often we can't see it and we're immersed in it but when we have a map or something that validates or shows it for us like what you're doing it's it's so profound i i remember um in the late 80s i started to channel and when i began one of the first things that happened um was really kind of interesting and my grandfather came in and um my father who was an elderly like was not so open minded to these kinds of things in that moment was talking to him and a little bit questioning and he asked to speak to his aunt which was my grandfather's sister and at the time he said oh well she went to a different planet she's in a different star system and she wow she's in that and talked about and then after that this other energy came through where um, it was named Blue Eyes and all that it spoke about was color and it was just this beautiful sphere and orb of light that was just moving and they said there was an entire star system and whole planets of just based only on the frequency of color and geometry and back then I mean now we know this and it makes more sense to us but in 1988 it was very foreign concept and um it's just so beautiful with the regression work and what you're doing that people tap into those memories of those different places that we've all been. And it seems like these memories are really surfacing and coming in and we're feeling our star families and people are connecting to them. And I really appreciate you saying not to force it or want it to happen and just to allow and to surrender for it to come in when it's meant to. And, um, recent years I've been channeling the Syrian elders and when they come they're so loving and sweet and they've been giving us gifts you know with their hands and pyramids of light and healing and um, you can just feel their presence in the room and it's so beautiful but it of course had to come when it did and we if it had come many years perhaps before people wouldn't be ready and so I love just allowing it to unfold when it unfolds. But if you have this map, like what you're creating, and people can see their galactic astrology, um, I think it gives them a sense of comfort and knowing. And so tell me a little bit about how do they go about doing that? And what, what do people discover in this process? Thank you for laying the question so beautifully. I It really gives accept greater acceptance and peace because there is this element of doubt inside us when we don't see something tangibly and especially if the collective consensus is still not there about extraterrestrial human life existence and reincarnation and all that the doubt is quite strong so although we feel everything and we get signs and you know magical synchronicities happen and we feel something very real still the doubt is there the mind uh, that likes everything nice and square. So then when you see these things uh, written black and white through astrological uh, chart, it that doubt goes away. And you you just, there is a shift in, in frequency that is quite noticeable where people have more light and more um, higher vibrational uh, frequency inside their being and more magic starts happening. So for example, when you mentioned that suddenly the Syrian 
uh, guides came to your life, I bet that if we would look at the transits of when that occurred, star Sirius would be transiting something in your natal chart. For example, in my experience, not so long ago through dream, I connected to star Sirius in a dream. They said the dog star, which was so odd to me because I never used the dog star name for Sirius. Um, and they like in the dream, it was revealed that it, the connection is important for me right now. So then when I woke up, I looked at the transits and Sirius star was exactly on my ascendant. So natally ascendant when you're born, the Eastern horizon, what is rising on the horizon? That's the astrological degree that is called the ascendant. So right now, Sirius is, you know, going through my ascendant. So I'm I'm reflecting and connecting more with the Syrian frequencies. And look, here we are, <laughs> where you have the strong Syrian energy coming through. So it's just so, so amazing um, how it works. Beautiful. And so you've trained so many people in this work that people can go to and and get their whole chart done and know all this. I mean, for someone in the work I do, because I channel so many different energies to see where it's coming in would be so powerful because it would not, not only, like you say, is it validating, but I could even direct as I'm teaching in the work I'm doing around a deeper understanding of this would be a moment where that energy is really amplified, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So we now have um, galactic astrology, soul reading practitioners who can offer the service in 20 different languages, which oh I could God. have never, ever dreamed that it will, you know, grow this much in such a short amount of time. So, and these people are really very passionate about this. They live and breed astro reading astrological um, alignments and tuning into people's energies and all these stories and really what collectively is happening in terms of how fast the astrology is evolving now and how we are bringing a lot more kind of intuitive um, insights, allowing it to be very personal and very unique to individuals rather than in ancient astrological books when they were describing meaning of different stars or planets, it was limited and um, kind of doomy and gloomy, <laughs> whereas now it's becoming more um, practical into our current day life experience. So it's wonderful to see. And there is also a free tool that we developed for anyone who would like to see which of the most commonly known stars are aligned, maybe to sun or moon or any of the planets. They can go to our website, galacticastrology.com and find a free chart put in either today's date so they'll see where the stars are in position to planets or their birth details and and be quite amazed by how much we are all connected to stars i really do believe that all of us are connected to multiple star systems and at different times these different star systems become more prominent in our consciousness so we have the opportunity at different times integrate different um, frequencies and wisdom and memories uh, based on what is going on collectively as well. And I really do believe that we are ushered here from all over the universe to go through this magnificent experience of um, holding space for planetary ascension, for a whole planet going into higher frequency and and somehow, it, you know, as everything is connected and microcosm is reflected in macrocosm i believe there is an upgrade in the whole galaxy so what we are doing here collectively is we are remembering some of the difficult experiences across the universe and bringing our compassionate um loving wise soul essence into these memories transmuting them resolving them and bringing more uh, harmony and greater connectivity to the whole galaxy as we you know when we go through the stage of connecting with different galactic races at one point we get to realizing that we can let go of all these attachments and labels and just return to the most important thing which is being love exactly. being wisdom and it's an amazing state to be i am so happy you said that because my whole philosophy mission and purpose in life is to radiate love and um we've just tapped into this beautiful infinite mother creation source grid um that just radiates infinite love that has that's boundless and vast 
And as all this energy and the shift on the planet is coming in, if we can just keep realigning, keep realigning to that, that center. And as you're saying, these memories come in and they flood. And a lot of times they're difficult or they're filled with trauma that just like you're speaking of that we can transmute them and we can make a conscious choice collectively to shift the timeline that we don't have to hold on to. We don't have to anchor them back in. We don't have to recreate them. We don't have to go through the cycles again, that we're at this beautiful choice point. Um, and we get to choose, we get to choose love. And how beautiful is that, right? We get to choose love. Beautiful. Yes. Love. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think the stage of connecting with galactics is an important one for many people as they are yearning for being seen and heard in their greatness, in mm -hmm. their light and love, but they don't know that so clearly yet. They still have so many uh, trauma memories and conditionings of the previous generations holding the, like dimming the light. So they're looking for something to pull them out of it. And then when they start opening up to the possibility that they are connected energetically to stars. You know, we really put them on the pedestal. Mm -hmm. Suddenly it becomes easier for them to let go of the limited identity they carried for so long. And suddenly they are starting to kind of expand and shine more brightly. Like I, I am a star seed. I am obviously connected to star when you see stars, when you see it in a chart and then you go through that stage of obsession, but it's, you know, it's becoming shorter and shorter for people because um, I'm so happy that the collective that, that is doing the galactic astrology work that they, they are focusing on not boosting egos, but to really remind people that um, love and kindness is really the fastest way for us to integrate all this and co-create a much more enjoyable collective experience so i hope that helps it helps so much it's like um for so many people there's a lot of tears a feeling of being welcomed home a remembering of oneness a tuning into a higher understanding and we can shed a little bit of the the density and merge back into our origin it's just it's really really beautiful so you were going to share with us about this Atlantean asteroid, which I don't know anything about, but we thought it was a nice synchronistic match since um, the Atlantean light code um, begins for my community and anybody who wants to join on Monday, which is just in a couple days. Um, I, I guess I'll share for a moment about that. I recently just returned from Italy. I was in Domenher, um, which is this beautiful community that has a, a deep connection also with Atlantis and a woman who is quite a specialist in Atlantean understanding was sharing with us that the founder there at Domenher's name was Falco, literally, and it sounds pretty outlandish and out there, but um, the story goes is that he and someone that was with him traveled through a time portal basically to Atlantis and the person that went with him was an artist. They were there for three full days, um, kind of right at um, just the height of Atlantis before the Nabais, but like when we were starting to get into some decadence and ego and all that. And they came back with these and painted everything. And so they have these incredible images of Atlantis, wow. a sliver of it in that moment. And it's really beautiful and fascinating. But through that whole process, it felt so important to um, that we focus so much on the trauma of Atlantis and and it's perhaps it's embedded in our cellular memory and many of us collectively carry that. But yet, can we go back into the timeline where it was flourishing and the gifts and the beauty and the love and the the healing and the capacities that they held then um, can we remember that? And can we carry that? Can we pull that through the timeline and embed more of that? And so I'm curious um, if that's collectively something that on some level we're kind of trying to remember to do to help usher in the new earth to accelerate um, the, the the birthing of the, of the new energy. And if knowing anything more about this, um, what you're going to share can help us or reveal why this is coming up right now. Beautiful, such an amazing timing because this year Asteroid Atlantis is being um, triggered, like the energetics of the Atlantean memories in our collective consciousness is quite potent through multiple transits. Um, and 
interestingly, during the time when you will lead your community to kind of connect with the energetics of Atlantis, um, the asteroid Atlantis is in a trine aspect to Chiron in Aries. So it's 120 degrees angle of asteroid Atlantis and Chiron, the wounded healer, um, an archetype that is you know, based on where you have it in your natal chart, it talks about the core wound that you have as a theme in your life that usually you get to a point of learning so much about that conditioning that you felt eventually guided to help others with similar wounds. So it becomes your um, kind of mission, mm. uh, you know. So if we have Atlantis trining, um, Chiron, trine is considered to be a positive aspect. It um, stimulates harmonious uh, connections it propels us in evolution in a quite effortless way so it's um, I think it's so timely that you hold such a beautiful loving kind wise compassionate grounded frequency that when you are bringing collective to remember Atlantis as you said your intention is to connect with that higher octaves of the experiences there and the memories there and I think it's so important to bring that in because yes there has been so much um, talk about the fall of Atlantis and everything that went wrong but I feel so many uh, groups that focus on um, clearing their own wounding with Atlantis like that's been that has been going on for so long at least in my um, awareness a lot of people have been focusing on healing their own trauma um, um, and kind of paying their karmic debts to, you know, if they misuse their healing and psychic gifts uh, by their memory in Atlantis. Now, actually, they're focusing many, many decades on helping others in a positive, in a good uh, way, uh, not malicious way, but a benefic way. So there's been a lot of work done already. So it's beautiful that now, and especially with this positive cosmic alignment, we want to start um bringing in the the higher octaves of the Atlantean wisdom. It's just so in the field right now, right? It's just, every, it, it's coming up a lot. And for a lot of people, perhaps it's, they don't even know about Atlantis or it just seems like some crazy fantasy and like, what the heck is that? But for a lot of people, it's just starting to seep in. And um, and like you say, they're, they're just having glimpses or a little bit of memories or something of attuning to these, these the bigger aspect of who they are vibrationally on all these different levels. And we're, we're really starting to shed this, this sense of separation, this sense of who we know ourselves in this very confined uh, construct that's breaking down all over the planet in all of the different sectors of our life. And I just love to see how it's opening up so much spaciousness to see ourselves as as these galactic beings. It was the other day, when was it? On Sunday, I was channeling for the group and um, I don't usually tap into Atlantis, but because it's coming in, I did. And we ended up going into the water and the, um, the inner waters came up and they were filled with all these codes. Um, from the Arctic and inside them as the ice was melting all the memories and the wisdom and the beauty of Atlantis was rising into our cells and then the dolphins came and they held space so that we could travel through this portal and then we met the galactic uh, the Atlantean council and they gave everybody a key to open up doorways to travel into other realms and it seems so fantasal like so big or bigger than life but you could feel the potency of it and people were crying and feeling it and I think you know back in the 80s when I started to channel if you were at a cocktail party and people said what do you do you would definitely not say you channeled an angel you would come up with something but you can see the growth right in the last like so much growth so many more people ready and open and I, I just love the work that you're doing is is taking it to the next level. It's like another whole leap of expansiveness. Just the idea that there's galactic astrology or that we can connect to our Atlantean lifetimes and tune into the gifts that were there and remember all of this. It just expands our thinking so much. It opens our mind and we get to, to look at how we've lived in such a confined, constricted construct. And it feels like they're breaking down so, so much. And I'm just I'm just so excited to be living in these times. It's just incredible. So 
you were saying that as we move into October, um, that it was going to even become stronger. The asteroid Atlantis, when it is activated by magnificent force like the supergalactic center or galactic center, so our galactic center revolves around supergalactic center along over 30 other galaxies. So it was really powerful force that is influencing and impacting all of us. Then the qualities of the Atlantean era can become much more online for those souls that um, remember using them. There was a whole very, you know, there were thousands of years when Atlantis was on the rise and where people were completely naturally working with water with crystals, with healing uh, properties, with uh, intuition and telepathy and all that can be quite prominent during this time. Yeah. We get to feel it and do it again. We just mm. have to remember it's like right there in the field and it's surfacing everywhere around us. And it's so exciting. I know um, even though I've been open to all this for so many years, I feel like just even myself, my gifts in the last maybe I don't know, three to six months have really amped up and amplified ability to hear people across the world, to uh, know things, to see visions, to have flashes, to um, self-regulate and, and bring more healing into the body at a faster rate on my own, to really be able to listen to the crystals even more. Like everything is just sort of amping up. And I remember years ago, Raphael said, well, you'll pierce the veil. And in the beginning, it will seem so hard, right? That pin, and it'll just keep widening. And then other people who haven't done necessarily what we might call the work will just catch up in a second. And they'll be like right there with you on the team going right through. And now I can feel this whole team of, of beings coming in and all the people on the planet so quickly the awakening process is so much faster. It's like they catch up in a minute. They're like right there, ready to go with you because it feels like the memories, um, something has opened. And so the flooding of the remembering comes in. So it doesn't have to take in time because time is shifting as we're understanding there is no time and space. And we're really grasping that more. We don't have to go through as long of a linear time process in the remembering and the awakening. It's like it's moving faster and faster. So those of us who perhaps may have felt that we were like pulling along for a long time have opened something or held enough spaciousness or a container that others now in like a blink of an eye, they're right there and their gifts are coming online. And so if you're saying with this galactic um, alignment that that may amplify in the fall, that'll yes. be and the side effect of gal of the super cosmic points, as I like to call them, is quantum leaps. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if you had these uh, like galactic center, super galactic center and beyond points in your natal chart, because by the sounds of it, what is manifesting in your life is you you are able to to download things ahead of time. And usually people who have these connections, that's their everyday life experience, they 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 are able to experience and comprehend things that are way ahead of time. And when you when you communicate them at the time when it's happening to you while you're downloading it, people people hear you, but they don't really get it. But within next six to nine months, they get it. And they're like, actually, now I see what you're talking about. I can experience it in my own reality now. So that quantum leap uh, is very possible then by the end of this year that people will be naturally experiencing um, telepathy with with our friends we already are it's just there'll be exponentially more people in that uh, experience of reality of psychic uh, uh, kind of tuning in and receiving and knowing about something that's around the corner and all those beautiful things of of um, everything is connected and yeah. we are just fine-tuning our natural abilities opening up to it and it's beautiful to see that we have so many people in the community that are helping uh, or or teaching uh, the importance of um, energy hygiene and grounding tools and all those important things because we need to know how to handle uh, any tools like night we can cut ourselves with knife if we don't know how to handle it so it goes hand in hand with the psychic and intuitive experience right yes thank you for reminding us of that that is some that can be a hard lesson and I wouldn't want anyone to go through that hard lesson. It's incredibly important to balance, right? To be in coherence, 
um, to bring in these very high energies. I lived in the celestial realm for so long, but if we don't know how to anchor it in, ground it down, integrate it, take time to integrate, to have space in between the work that we're doing, um, it can be dangerous. Uh, I mean, I don't want to use an alarming word like that, but um, it's really, really important that we, and that we, we use a sense of sacredness, that we take our time, that we don't rush things, that we put what we need boundaries, that we put what we need to have in place um, to contain well, these frequencies, because they're so expansive, they're so beautiful, they're so big, but like anything, um, they, they need to have, be funneled in a way that we're still in our human body. We're still here on 3D. We're still in time and space. We're still living in a linear world. And um, it's uh, very, very important to ground. Yeah. We have, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, celestial bodies supporting that um, grounded um, spiritual experience. Right now we have a Saturn in Pisces. So Saturn is all about, rules and regulations and responsibility and integrity and Pisces is all about uh, no boundaries no connections but Saturn is teaching us the importance of energetical boundaries so a lot of people are going through that experience where if we if we don't have if we don't maintain the energetical boundary awareness immediately we experience the 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 side effect and how uncomfortable it is so that's the Saturn teaching us actually you know you, you really need to be aware and diligent with all that and we also have Uranus in Taurus Uranus is all about breaking limits and evolving fast rapidly and unexpectedly but Taurus is um, grounding the evolutionary re leaps into earthly human experience and taking care of the physical human body and even using um, you know, latest technology and sound frequencies, especially now, um, light therapies, uh, all these things, but taking care of the body and the earth. So it's beautiful how everything kind of supports the whole process. It is. I love how the universe has it all figured out. We don't have to worry about it, right? It's all lining up just how we need it. But spiritual hygiene, I, I've learned many lessons over the year of being so open, so loving, oh, it's okay. And that is not, um, does not serve us. And um, it's important, yeah, to be open hearted and in a beautiful space of collect connecting to these higher frequencies. But we have to bring that balance um, of grounding and anchoring and, and ritual and um, spiritual kind of hygiene, right? That we have things in place, whatever they are, and they're different for everybody, but whatever they need to do to make sure that that's, that's taken care of. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So thank you. So for anyone who is curious about the asteroid Atlantis, whether it played uh, important role in their natal chart when they were born where was the asteroid it moves through the zodiac quite fast it will stay in a sign every three months or so but the movement is kind of irregular um, so right now it's eight at 18 degrees of leo uh, in summer it'll move into virgo and so on so it's moving through zodiac uh, quite fast um, so you can go to a website called astro.com and figure out there how to uh, find your personal horoscope, you put in your birth details, and then you go to extended uh, selection and you type in the number for asteroid Atlantis, which is 1198. And then and when you calculate the chart, it'll show you where Atlantis was when you were born. And if you have a planet nearby or your lunar nodes or any of the symbols, it is very likely that you have ha had incarnations in Atlantis and that's why you're drawn to this topic. That's why you're here watching this. It's not a coincidence. And I'm actually so curious, Kelly, now about your chart. I bet it is there because I, I see it with people who come forward as teachers, guides. And when something like this actually comes through their life experience where they feel such a um, urge or passion to talk about it now and support the collective uh, memory and healing and um, recollection of all the wonderful gifts and qualities of Atlantis, then the Atlantis was usually connected, whether through their sun or lunar nodes or midheaven. It's really there. And there is another Atlantis um, that is connected to Lemurian age that preceded Atlantis. And um, I believe the asteroid Hawaii is 
indicator of that because through people that also recall the Murian era and who have this beautiful, beautiful frequency and especially um, wisdom of water is coming through their teachings. Asteroid Hawaii is usually in aspect to asteroid Atlantis. So it's like they're passing the wisdom of the Lemuria through Atlantean age now into our current uh, life experience. It's just so, so mind blowing how it's all there. <laughs> It's amazing it's so amazing yeah the lemurian energy i have to be if i'm to be honest is my favorite even mm. over the atlantean it's so it feels stronger with you it absolutely feels stronger with you yeah yeah i feel much more connected to the lemurian energy um we were privileged to have veda on uh not long ago we made her this lemurian yeah. um beautiful mermaid painting with her image in it and um it was just so sweet how, you know, whether it's water or any of the elements right now, we're starting to tune to them in such a different way in a remembering that they are alive beings. And I love how so many people are now referring to water as she or mm -hmm. as an energy, you know, it's as an entity. consciousness living um, being. Yeah. yeah. And I was just tuning in and remembering that we did that with all of the elements as well. You know, we're focused yeah. water so big right now and so many codes are coming in from the water and we're loving it and honoring it and receiving it and healing with it and communicating with it which is so beautiful um but it just tuning into all the elements as i love that you're saying that yes we mm. don't want to live out leave out fire earth and air and even the uh etheric energies right <laughs> beautiful yeah and there is such a thing as elements in astrology so some people will have more fiery fire element more earth element some will be quite equally proportional between all four elements and uh, sometimes if you are over um, equipped with one element and really short on the other usually you meet a partner who will fill in the gap because they'll have the opposite element it's interesting to see that in relationships or then once you're aware of it of any lack or over um abundance of certain elements you can consciously then work with them and uh, find more balance or bring more balance balance into your life so that too is quite fun to work with yeah isn't it and who we're attracted to depending on what we need at any moment right i'm all water I'm pisces and cancer so big ah, beautiful. water department that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. there's one more thing i want to mention because you have such a strong connection with the uh, archangels as you as you channeled them uh, there are four royal stars in heavens that in ancient Persia were considered the guardians of heavens on each cardinal direction, and each of them is connected to different archangel. And people who feel very strong, prominent connection to the archangels, like Archangel Michael, they would always, at least in my experience, when I've met them, have, have a star Aldebaran in their natal chart. Um, then... If you have um, Antares, uh, another royal star, Archangel Uriel is quite strong and often shows up as a as your guardian. Uh, if you have royal star Pomohot in your life, then the Archangel Raphael may be your guardian oh, and you may God. have affinity to that. And mm -hmm. if you have... Um, sorry, uh, royal star Regulus, then Archangel Raphael, maybe your guide, and star Fomohod, then Archangel Gabriel, the divine messenger, maybe your guide. And it also manifests uh, through your life experience by inclination towards the frequencies that each of these archangels represent. That also is another mind-blowing area to explore and see. <laughs> So many things to learn and to find out. Oh, I would love to know that because I've been channeling Raphael from the beginning, 30 some years now as the angel of healing. And um, when Raphael first came in back in the 80s, we we were taping it on little tape recorders and asking mm -hmm. who it was. And it said it was the Archangel Raphael. We're like, no way, it can't be. Um, so I'd be so curious to see. Yeah, that's amazing. We're going to have a look after the recording. <laughs> okay. That sounds like fun. Well, this has just been so wonderful. Thank you so much, Julia. Uh, there is one more thing that I've noticed at the end of your, is it a three week process that you will uh, lead your community with, with the Atlantean? Yeah. Focus? 
So every, um, I downloaded 33 light codes um, a couple of years ago, and we've done 20 of them so far. We One was in Ireland. It was called The Goddess of the Source was Don Yu and the Tuta de Nanan, And we were at Ben Buelven and we were at um, Mullenhead and we had the most mad. We opened up nine portals with Bridget. It was incredible. And then we just did the new earth code where everybody um, tuned into the new earth and Mary Magdalene came in and we worked with this mother source creation grid to merge it with the Christ consciousness grid. And we're just, it's, it was like, everybody was crying and it was so beautiful. And now it's the Atlantean code. It starts on Monday and yeah, each code is three weeks. Um, mm -hmm. And it's um, in the mornings and I uh, channel and uh, we do activations and it's kind of, I mean, can be life-changing for people. So yeah, it starts on Monday for three weeks. So I just want to say that during that period of time, the asteroid Atlantis will be going through the um, higher degrees of Leo. So Leo, if we think about the archetype of Leo as the processional cycle or the age of Leo at the time of the fall of Atlantis, you know, that may come into consciousness of certain individuals that will be drawn to it. Um, you know, the shadow side of Leo uh, being um, needing attention, needing recognition. Um, so ego stuff. Yeah, the, very much the ego stuff. And then flipping that to the bright side of Leo, the light side of Leo of generous heart and and shining your light regardless if if regardless of the feedback, you simply do it because you love being the light mm -hmm. uh, and sharing and co-creating with others. Um, so that may be the kind of something that people will be reflecting upon in their life experience. And then it's trining Chiron, as I mentioned, in Aries. So the archetype of Aries um, that may have, again, play its um, role in the uh, end of Atlantean era when certain individual were in the leadership position and perhaps quite selfishly not thinking about how their actions will impact the collective and Aries shadow side is about me myself and I and and not really considering others so then the light side of Aries is um, becoming the pioneer but inspiring others to get excited about new possibilities and new potentials and uh, so that may be important and uh, trining Uranus um, sorry, squaring Uranus in, in Taurus. It's about those leaps uh, of um, evolution, but remembering the importance of taking good care of the body. So just kind of putting all that in, these energies will be quite potent during this time. And But at the end of that three week, the last day, the 21st of June, asteroid Sekhmet will be exactly conjunct asteroid Atlantis. And Sekhmet oh, in aging. Summer solstice too. It's yes. Yes, I think it's very, very significant. Wow. Um, so, and there's a full moon that day as well. I'm going to be so, in. Yes, I'm so glad I spotted that thanks to uh, this conversation. So, for anyone who might not know, in ancient Egyptian mythology, Sekhmet was considered to be the warrior goddess, but also the goddess of medicine. Like she will fight for justice and what is important, and will not um, let the misuse or abuse of power. She will protect what's sacred, um, but also bring medicine to those who are in alignment with divine original blueprints, right? So there's a lot of powerful energetics that will be supporting this journey that you're on and that you're taking your um, audience on with you and i look, look forward to sharing it with my audience too i'm sure they'll resonate so much with your with your frequency oh well, thank you that's so interesting i'm so glad you shared that with me because in the middle of teaching the code i'll be flying to scotland to the outer hebrides to uh you know iona and sky and isle of lewis and harris but we'll be at the cavendish stones for the summer solstice um mm -hmm. And then the full moon, but if you're saying Sekhmet's frequency will be potent then of that warrior, powerful, protective, fierce Sekhmet energy, right? She's so I love Sekhmet. And together with Atlantis, I think that's really special. You yeah. know, I feel like beings that were in Atlantis, witnessing the collapse, feeling perhaps, well, from some of the QHHD sessions um, 
what I've witnessed people going through some of those memories, the sense of helplessness and deep sadness by not being able to do anything about it, like really having to surrender to the ending of something that was so magnificent, so amazing. So I believe the segment frequency, the warrior um, with the Atlantis um, during the eclipse or, or during the summer solstice, I feel those souls in our human bodies now will feel a resolution of, of those feelings of frustration and sadness. And there'll be this healing to accepting that there was this big age of consciousness descending. Like we learned so many lessons through all the thousands of years of oppression and duality and polarity games. And we can see the value of all that now. So I feel there may be a lot of, you know, emotional uh, release and upgrades to greater peace and greater wisdom in seeing the balance of that universe is holding no matter what, you know, that there is much greater cycles that we are part of. So, and also if there are souls and there are souls here who still feel like they can take it all and rule all, and I feel those heads, those that. heads, I feel those heads will be falling and that segment frequency will help that. I'm, I'm witnessing uh, people telling me stories where how they are standing up to their uh, toxic family members or toxic boss and like that these energies coming through them suddenly and they just and, and the the toxic um, behavior that the, the, these people are seeing that they can't do it anymore. Like it's not working anymore. So I feel if that is happening collectively, I mean, for people do it. finally come into their power and ha hold that segment vibration and stand yeah. in the power. With great respect. I have to say, it's beautiful to see that we don't fight back with their style of communication, but we just oh. hold ground with wisdom, love, and, you know, integrity and respect. So Exactly. We got this. We got this. We got this. Really quick, the one thing that we thought was interesting is so so often we talk about you know when Atlantis falls and the greed and the ego and the overabundance and all of that of you know taking advantage of things, but we forget about that perhaps that was a very small portion of the people that were there, and so yes. many were held as you know I don't want to talk about victim consciousness because it's all woven together divinely perfectly but on some level you know we're just helpless like you were saying to to what was happening in the trauma of that and that this segment vibration of coming back in and standing in their power in a, like you say in integrity in a beautiful and loving but strong way with boundaries and, and clarity and if that all that healing could resonate and funnel in during this time right at the summer solstice how how special is that that's so great <laughs> i must add one more thing while you were talking the the chiron uh, chiron in aries talked about people who feel like they didn't do enough like people who are carrying guilt i think guilt will also be cleared and chiron in aries is teaching us to accept our humanity accept our divinity and kind of be at peace with kind of collective um, forces also working with us like we can't control everything and everyone so so letting go of feeling guilty like we didn't do didn't do enough and even in this lifetime there people have this unconscious conditioning of like I should do more and you know I sh should help everyone because I know what would help them and I can't like we need to let go of that mm. too so hopefully that somehow will transpire also during the experience over the next few weeks i really love that just letting go we don't have to fix it all and we can't and we can just be it's a greater self-love then as a result mm. really really is right just some uh gentleness with ourselves and compassion for mm. ourselves yeah well this has been delightful and you are amazing and i'm so glad we finally got to connect and um please go and visit julia's website and all of her information we'll put it down below in the description and find out where the asteroid atlantis is and all this stuff and thank you for all of your service and you have such a tender heart and are very much in integrity and love. I can sense that. And I appreciate you taking the time today to uh, to talk to our community. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. I see you too. I feel you. Much, much love to all. Okay. Thank you.